Hey everyone, welcome back to Lazy Boy Crypto. 2022 has been a crazy year for DeFi. One of the things that projects did was they advertised high APYs. These were ridiculously high APYs and they were used to attract investors. One of the projects that did this first was Titano Finance and they offered 100,000% APY. This was an insane figure. But the reality was that you weren't going to get anything like that. You may have got 100,000% APY in the form of Titano tokens, but those tokens would end up being worthless because the rewards, they came from minting new tokens, which increased the supply, thereby decreased the price of Titano. So your tokens ended up with no value. And this isn't real yield. And what do I mean by that? I mean, it's not real income. It's not income generated from the real world. This isn't sustainable. This is not what you want in a project. So how do we escape this trap of falling for high APYs in crypto projects? Well, the answer is actually simple. It's the one that we tell you all the time, and that's to do research. It's important to actually dig deep and look at historical data and performance to really understand what you're getting into. A lot of the time projects will advertise a high APY, whether they have real yield or not, but it's your job as an investor to thoroughly investigate that. Do research to see what you're actually going to end up getting, because more often than not, you're not going to get anything close to that advertised figure. So on one hand, you have projects that offer a high APY that can attract lots of new investors. It can raise their token price if they have one. And these are good things, of course. But once people realize that they're probably not going to get that advertised APY, that they're not receiving what they were promised, then people start to get scared. And when they get scared, they sell. And if you have too many people who sell and exit a project at once, then the project may never recover. We've seen it time and time again when people sell and exit projects. It can have detrimental effects. But if the APY is low to begin with and realistic to begin with, then this is far less likely to happen, especially if the income is also coming from real yield. I mean, think about the stock market. The returns that you get on stocks are way lower than what you get in crypto. But there are now a lot of crypto projects that are offering real yields, and they are far similar in returns to things like the stock market. If you have a low APY, if a project is transparent about what the offering is, about what the returns will be, then you can manage your investments and risks more efficiently. It also means the project is probably going to be far more sustainable if it's a low APY or return and that income is generated from the real world if it's real yield. Of course, no one can predict losses, but the fact that some projects, they advertise a projected APY, even if it's from real yield, that projected APY is often a figure that's unreachable. The investor is not actually going to get that return. So it's far better for you, an investor, if you invest in a project that is far more transparent. Even if the figure may be a lot lower than what we've been used to seeing this year in DeFi, it's probably going to be far more beneficial for you, the investor, and less likely that the project will just tumble. So there's a project called Polysynth, and I'll have a video about what Polysynth does and how it works in another video. So why don't we have a look at Polysynth and then some other projects that advertise a projected APY, and I'll show you the differences, and I'll show you what you need to look for when you're doing your research so that you can avoid projected high APYs and instead find projects that are offering real yield. So let's take a look right now. So this is Polysynth. I'll get more into detail about Polysynth in another video, but I want to show you the projected APY versus the real yields. And this is what I mean. So here are Polysynth's vaults. Now you can deposit Matic, Ethereum, or Bitcoin. And this is on the Ethereum and Polygon network, just so you know. So the APYs are advertised here and it says real APY underneath them. And these are calculated by getting the average of the past four weeks performance and then annualizing them. So getting the average of the previous four weeks and then multiplying them by 52 weeks, which is 
52 weeks in a year. So that's how they do it, and the fees are also included in this calculation. So these are the covered call vaults. So these are the APYs that you're gonna get, and they're not advertising a projected APY. Let's look at it. So they're not taking a projection, they're not taking a guess and saying, this is what you're gonna get in a year, because no one can predict losses but also they want to be transparent about the vault's performance and they only want to give you actual data so you can see nowhere on this page are they advertising a projected apy so what do i mean by projected apy well let's take a look at a project that actually uses a projected apy so this is theta nuts and they do the same thing as Polysynth, you know, they sell covered calls and they do options trading and that kind of thing. And you can basically deposit your crypto and just let the vault do its thing. The difference is you'll notice their APYs are actually higher than Polysynth. So this is the same type. This is a covered call and it's Bitcoin. But if we actually look at the historical data, which is all the way down here, that's the thing. If an investor sees this and they think, great, 21% uh, APY, that's amazing. I want that. And they invest. They may not actually do more research and find out that you're not going to get the 21% APY. And this is why if you actually look at the historical data, then you're going to see the performance of this vault. So if we scroll down, we can actually see while the projected APY is 21%, the 12 month yield is actually 6.3%. So the yield uh, over the entire year is actually, it was 6.3%. So they're projecting 21%, but the reality is, you're probably far more likely to end up with something around this figure. So they're projecting 47% for this USDC vault. But if you actually look at the performance of this, um, it's down to 0.75 uh, right now, which is about a 25% loss. So they're projecting 47% return in a year, but at the moment, the loss is 25%. So why are you advertising this high APY when the reality is you're probably not going to make anything near that? In fact, the vault is making losses right now. And if you scroll down again, you can see projected APY and you have the 30 day growth. However, the 12 month yield, the yield that has been made within the previous 12 months is actually minus 23%. And the yield since inception annualized is minus 46%. So these figures, this projected APY can be quite misleading. It's important to actually look at the real yield, you know, look at previous performance and see how well the fund is actually performing. And here's another example with uh, ribbon finance. And if we look at this Ethereum vault, and we scroll down to the actual vault performance, they're projecting 26% APY, yet the vault performance so far is only 5.9% APY. You could see it was growing and growing and growing, and then suddenly there's a big loss, and then suddenly the cumulative yield is actually less than 1%. So you're advertising something which in reality, the investor may not get anywhere near that figure. If you just look at the actual vault performance, it's nowhere near 26%. So by looking at these figures, the real yield, because this is the actual yield that was earned, not this figure, this is projected, this is like a guess. This figure is the real yield earned so far. So you want to find the real yield, the real performance figures of whichever project you're investing in. So the point of this video was to show you what projected yield versus real yield looks like, and you can see the differences. And unfortunately, if you don't do enough digging, if you don't do enough research, then you would be none the wiser. You'd think you're getting 47% APY when in fact you're just getting 6% APY. So there's a huge benefit to doing more research and to actually taking the time to look at a project before you invest. And so that's why I wanted to show you those projects today so you could see the difference between Polysynth, which gives you the real actual yield, 
versus a project that just shows you a projected AEPY. And if you would like to check out Polysynth for yourself, then there is a link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. And I will have more videos about Polysynth coming very soon. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.